is I, Haruhama, the Kombucha Mama, and I am excited. I have a friend of mine joining me today, Sun Chung, who's going to talk all about kimchi and anti-inflammatory and kimchi for skincare. I know, right? What do we do? Rub it on our face? <laughs> You'll have to stay tuned to find out. But how is your Monday going, dear friends? If you have any questions for us, I hope you will drop them in the chat. As always, please like, share, subscribe, follow, tell the whole world about how wonderful this podcast is. Of course, if you think so. But I am super nourished and full this weekend. I went to the desert and I saw family. I saw my grandmother who is in her 90s. And I always bring her a bottle of kombucha and she says, <gasps> Is this for me? I love kombucha. Oh, son, yes, how can you join? So click on the button that says request to join and we'll get you added in here. Um, so I saw my grandmother in her 90s and she loves kombucha, so I'm always happy to bring some to her. And then um, I also, my cousins had flown in. My uncle was, uh, two of my uncles were there. It was so lovely. Um, and it was just really nourishing. Oh, Fedbrew, great question. What's the secret to my grandmother's longevity? <laughs> great genes. <laughs> I wish I had a better answer than that, but truthfully, she really, um, I, I don't know that she has any secrets other than she now lives in the desert, so that helps living in a climate that's better suited for her. My grandmother's from southern Minnesota originally, or northern Iowa. They lived in southern Minnesota for many years, and I think after a certain point, that cold weather was just too much and so they got themselves to the desert so um, I think that is probably the best place for them so it was just so lovely and nourishing do you feel that way I don't feel that way with all my family true confession um, there's always some some folks that are more challenging to be around but I call it the creme de la crumbs because it was so nice to see everybody and it's been a few years so it just was so we didn't even do anything all that exciting, but it was just nice to be in each other's company. So, um, <clears throat> does she laugh a lot? Actually, she complains a lot. She's um, <laughs> she's one of these depression-era grandmas um, who likes to save a lot of things, but she keeps herself super busy. I think that's what it is. She is nonstop. She's always tidying something or cleaning something up, um, and uh, yeah, she <laughs> she's more of a grumble gus. Um, but yes, yes, son, we're going to let you in here in just a moment. I just wanted to finish sharing about my family and we're going to get you on here. Um, so yes, yeah, son Chung is joining us. She's a skin renewal specialist who helps individuals who suffer from chronic skin conditions and transform their skin to look clearer and beautiful in 30 days. She became medicine free at age 41 after relying on steroids for 30 years for her chronic eczema. As the founder of Hungry Gopher, a popular channel on YouTube with over 8 million views, amazing, she is grateful for the opportunity to share her expertise and experience to help chronic skin condition sufferers. She has developed a seven-point natural skin care solution system that guarantees results in 30 days. I'm so excited to welcome Sun Chung, my friend, here on Instagram Live. Welcome, Sun, to Mama Mondays. Hello there. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Thanks for having me. Yes. So good to see you. How How is everything in Sun's world? Everything is great. I just came back from Mojave camping trip. So I'm, I'm all pumped and I love to share with you guys with what I have learned through the trip and more. So that's awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the Mojave, you were in the desert as well. Tell us all about it. It was beautiful. It's, it's so beautiful out there. It's nice to be out in the nature. And it's just, man, it was just gorgeous. We are hiking, we are camping, we are cooking all kinds of good food. We, <laughs> we cooked, we made skewer from scratch. We made a kebab that was phenomenal. So that was awesome. <laughs> oh, that sounds lovely. Um, and what I love about the desert is all of the stars you can see at night. Yeah, it was. Lots of amazing yeah. wildlife. But yeah, it really was. It really was. There's this uh, little kangaroo mouse over there that uh, acquainted us. We are not feeding him or her. Or she's very bold. Last time we went there a couple of months ago, we made this amazing salsa all day. We like my husband cooked, grilled a pineapple, like the peppers. He literally spent like four hours making the salsa, and we were gonna eat that with the grilled fish. And <laughs> it was dark by the time we eat it. 
and we turn the lamp on, the LED lamp, and we look at the salsa bowl, and my husband goes, there's a mouse in the salsa. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that mouse is very acquainted, and I saw that guy again, this trip, so I was like, the world is out. So we're being very careful not to feed that, but yeah, so anyway, that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, animals, they're so clever. They're always going to find a treat somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. We all love to eat. So well, I'm, well, I'm excited to hear all about your journey and how you were able to go steroid free. Um, but let's hear a little bit about your story. So, so what brought you to obviously you're Korean. So did you grow up eating kimchi with share with us some of the details of your story? Yes. Um, yeah, I was born and raised in Korea. I came to the USA in my twenties. So I'm very full on Korean. Um, so it was very common growing up eating kimchi, leaving something that's being fermented at room temp. And, you know, I have such fond memory of growing up. My grandmother would make kimchi with this big tub, so I can take tub literally, like it's the tub you can take a bath in. And that's winter kimchi, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's full on, like you, so like that amount of kimchi and I was, a, I was a, you know, since I was a girl, like back then that only the daughters will help the mm -hmm. mothers to make food. So I wanted to go out play, I was probably like five or six and I was just like, I wanna play rather than peeling garlics all day, right? Mm -hmm. And I, so I wasn't into it, but I really liked tasting part because, you know, they didn't have recipes back then. They just they do as you go. That's what they say. Um, uh, 적당히 means just right amount, right? So they do so much. They do 적당히, right? And put some red pepper here, like kuchukaru, Korean red chili flakes, and salt here, and like seasonings. And I'll do all that because their both hands are occupied with all the seasoning. And I'll like pour them in there and they like have me taste it. Like, what do you think? Is that the right salt level? So I really liked that tasting part a lot. So yeah, that's how I grew up. So I was very familiar with fermentation and I totally took it for granted until recent science actually shined the light on how healthy it is, even though it's, it's an ancient, it's ancient secret, right? Our ancestors have been using this for thousands of years. And it's such a beautiful relationship with symbiotic beings, the microbiomes and us together. So that's really cool. Yeah, well, and I love what you said about tasting because I think sometimes we forget that tasting is a really crucial part of fermentation. Oh yes, um, that's all about it. You know, we can follow the same recipe again and again and again, but that doesn't mean it's always gonna taste the same. It could be there's a different uh, environmental factors, or maybe you're using a different type of tea. And so tasting is so important to understand how those flavors develop over time. Yeah. And I love that you, what, that word you used where it's like just the right amount. And so it isn't exactly a perfect recipe, but it really is about adding enough so that the taste is correct. Um, as opposed to like, it's always this amount of this and this amount of that. So, uh, how organic and natural that whole process is. And I think sometimes in the Western world, we get hung up. We want all the, what's the right recipe? What are the right directions? Tell me the, you know, the one way I'm supposed to do it. And in fact, there are many ways we can do it. So I love hearing about that and growing up with the grandmothers and mothers teaching you, passing on this tradition. And, and you know, we hope that we're reigniting that tradition and culture here so that, the next generations have that lineage, that unbroken connection of fermentation. But so it sounded like you took it for granted. You came to the U.S. and then what happened from there? Well, I came to the U.S. and I'm very, very blessed with um, very sensitive skin and very sensitive food sensitivities. So I just have um, since I was born, I, my mom told me I had such skin trouble that she just spent so much money and time taking me to numerous doctors. And I had full blown uh, cerberic dermatitis when I was like 11. So I used steroids from that point and for 30 years. And when I hit what one might call midlife crisis, the company that I worked for went bankrupt and I would start to gain weight, especially around my belly for no reason. And uh, and I was just a, a lot, a lot under a lot of stress and my inflammation just skyrocketed with that. And, and my steroid, magic steroid after 30 years, it stopped working. 
I literally, it was my best friend for 30 years and my skin was so inflamed on top of my head. It just rare and rare and raw. It's just itchy and rashes and smelly. God, I felt bad for my husband. I'm talking about it now, but you know, I mean, that's what comes with marriage sometimes, right? <laughs> really with that. <laughs> so, yeah, so like I, and I just poured the steroids down on my scalp and it wouldn't come down. And I literally felt like, you know what, how inflama inflammation feels like when you have it, it's hot, it's raw, it's red. You literally feel like you're on fire. And that's how I felt like my, my skin shows over my body, hives and rashes. And so out of desperation, because the medicine didn't work and there is no stronger medicine than steroids because I went to see so many dermatologists and doctors told me, you, you want to take it easy on this. But I'm like, that's the only one that works. Like, what do you want me to do? And I was in the mind that even though I thought I was health conscious, I was just like, I mean, that's the math, right? So like, I'm like, what now? I was desperate. So out of desperation, I started really digging in. I did, I spent many hours just like digging in and researching. And I found out that there's a connection between inflammation and gut health and mm -hmm. your chronic health problems, such as, well, the skin is the most loud appearing one. It's because it's the largest organ in the body. <laughs> Yeah, you're covered in it. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. if you're if you have reoccurring rashes and hives, if it keeps coming back, if it doesn't go away, that's a huge warning sign. There is something crazy going on in your gut, and your your inflammation is chronically high. So that's really bad news for you. And that's where I was at. So I well, and just to pause there, like mm -hmm. I think your story mirrors a lot of people's stories, and that. Yeah. You know, they had an ailment, allopathy, Western medicine, pharmaceuticals. They, they had a solution for a period of time, but it only ended up being a Band-Aid as opposed to going to the root cause. And so while you would reapply the Band-Aid again and again and again, unfortunately, it was never going to what was actually happening inside of you. And so over time, that Band-Aid just stopped working because your body is really saying, hey, wake up, hello, I've been trying to tell you something here for a little while. Exactly, and, exactly. But, you know, we're not, we haven't lived in a culture where we focused on root causes as much as just putting those Band-Aids on. So it's really exciting, like you're saying, to be in this moment. We're learning about the human microbiome. We're understanding that we can heal illnesses and diseases that we once thought were only something we had to treat forever um, yeah. and that we couldn't get to a cure for. So let's hear more about how then you got turned on to this um, microbiome connection. Yeah, I mean, that's a really beautiful point, Hannah. I, I'm glad you made that point. That's really brilliant. It's, it really is truly that. It's that, but it's all based on science because it's that whole what you talked about was like, okay, I was born with these skin problems. I had so many numerous skin allergies, food sensitivities. Like, I mean, I used to, when I ate a pork, when I was like five, I had like hives like this on my eyes and my, my family stopped eating pork for like six months, as long as they could, right? So, so that's a long story. And they, they, they had like, I gotta eat some Korean spicy pork and that they came back. So. <laughs> I was like, I'm eating like a hive like this on my lips. I, no. I just didn't care. I love food. So, but I don't have that anymore. So that's, that's awesome. So with that science, that old science, if you have that genetic problem that you're going to have it the rest of your life, and that's where I was stuck for 30 plus years. But that is not true. Like it is really based on science. I have a little drawing here for you to share. So it's called, can you see it? It's called yeah, epigenetics. Yeah, it's, it's a very um, exciting field of study in biology called epigenetics. Epi means above. So you are above your genes. Genes do, de don't determine your health. You do. So that's the beauty of it. So only last than like, uh, Bruce Lipton, who's cell biologist and very renowned scientist in this field, he's, he said less than 1% of the genes is truly genetic. There is something wrong with your genes. But I mean, where does that put you? 99%, right? That you can actually do something about it. Genes don't determine your health. And I'm a living proof of that because, well, I, I don't have it. Like, since 2015, 
I become medicine free, including steroids that I relied on. I mean, God knows how much money I spent on this anti-itching creams and all this things, claritin that I ate like a popcorn every day for years on end, and I don't anymore. So that is super good for me, and it's super good for you because I'm here to talk about it. So, well, so, before we get to how you healed all of this, epigenetics, you are absolutely right, and this is what's pretty amazing because I think – Right, there was a certain body of knowledge like, okay, our genes determine everything. And that's what the Human Genome Project was designed to do. It was like, okay, if we just encode the entire genome, then we can come up with novel therapeutic solutions to help genetic diseases. And what we discovered, well, first of all, they could not finish the Human Genome Project until they started to understand the role that bacteria play, which is what directly led to the Human Microbiome Project being founded, I want to say, in 2010. And... Um, but yes, this is an empowering message. This is a message of hope because what it says is just because you might be predisposed genetically to uh, X, Y, or Z disease, it does not mean that you have to take that on or that you have to be impacted by it. There are opportunities for you to heal from it. So let's hear how did you unravel your 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 whole problem and, and find a solution. That That is right on the money. So I did. Based on that theory, I was like, all right, I'm going to give it a try because there's nothing else left I can do, literally. Um, so I learned since the gut health and inflammation is closely related because inflammation is the reaction of your immune system trying to protect you. When you see something that's threatening to you, whether it's a pathogen or some proteins in foods, not protein itself, but some proteins in food like gluten, if your body sees it, as a threat, it shoots out all these inflammatory chemicals. So by learning that, I was like, all right. So I found the list of foods that is highly inflammatory, has the properties that raise inflammation in the body. I took them out. And in the, at the same time, I added food that is really good for gut health because improving gut health means helping your immune system because 80% of your immune system is located in your gut. So... By doing that, it was amazing. I took, and I started reading a book, The, um, Auto, the Autoimmune Solution by Dr. Amy Myers. And when I read that, I was like, there's no way in the world I can follow this. It just <laughs> seemed impossible. But I, I was still desperate. I'm like, but I can do a few things. So I started removing a few things, most highly inflammatory foods out of my diet. And I literally saw the changes on my skin in a matter of a week. And I was, then I was in, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna give it a go. So my journey started there from 20, you know, like research started in 2014 and I started that in 2015, I finally got my courage up and to do it and taking baby steps. And that was amazing to see my skin clearing up for the first time in my life without steroids. That was the first time I woke up in 30 years without scratching myself till bleeding in the morning. That was the first thing I did. I just like scratch it like crazy when I woke up in the morning. And, <laughs> and that was the first time I woke up. I'm like, you know what? I actually feel good. My skin looks good. I'm not itching. Like it, it was revolutionary. And I had bursts of energy because my immune system didn't have to constantly fight. It was calmer. So that was really awesome. What was a mind blowing part about this is that in 2017, that I see them force it at all. Like my mom used to send me stories from Korea to here. I was freelancing. Medicine was really expensive. So she's like, that was really hard on her because doctors told her like, you got to stop using this med. It's really terrible for you. And I'm like, well, I need it. Right. So she, she it was hard for her. And she was just thrilled that she didn't have to send me the match anymore. But the, she saw that I stopped the match for three, two, for two years at this point. And at this point, my mother got so sick with severe back pain. She came, she went to see all kinds of doctors and it was to the point that she couldn't stand up straight for a couple of hours when she woke up in the morning. And it was, my mother lives in Korea and I live here in SoCal. I just, Man, it was just so hard to watch her. She just lost her smile for a couple of years. It was just hard. 
but but I knew there's a connection with inflammation and gut health and inflammation depend on your genetic propensity. Someone like me who has the skin propensity that you reveal on your skin for my mom, it was back pain. Mm -hmm. So I put the connection together. I'm like, and I had her well enough to fly over here in the States with me. And we tried full on anti-inflammatory meal plan for 28 days. It was mesmerizing. I mean, I can show you a little picture of what happened here. So in 2017, my mother was, I mean, literally bedridden. She mm. was, she didn't smile. She just, that wasn't like her. That wasn't who she was. And like, look at her now. She's 2020 picture, but she, I mean, she's, she says she joined this Korean pop star, Im Young-ung's fan club. She's, she's rocking and rolling. It's so fun to talk. It's awesome. We just giggle when we talk, and she was just going hiking. She, she told me that she can't hang out with her friends. They are 10, 20, like the same age as she is. She hangs out with her with friends that are 10, 20 years younger because she's like, ah, oh, they all talk about getting sick. Like, it's not fun. Like, I got more energy. Like, I got more, you know, vitality. So she just... She lives it out. It's just so fun to talk to her. We just mostly just giggle on the phone these days. So that is the power of how you can change the trajectory of your life when you heal your gut and really take care of yourself from inside out. Well, these are amazing stories of transformation. And I think the fact that it happened not only here in the United States, but also in Korea indicates that there's, you know, there's inflammatory foods in all food supplies, right? There's nowhere on this planet we're likely immune from there being some sort of food that can have a negative impact on your body. Um, but what I think everybody's so excited to hear is what are some of these fermented foods? Obviously, we know the kimchi mm -hmm. was really important, but what else did you uh, incorporate? And, and then, you know, what else can other people incorporate if how, how do they get started? Like, how does someone who's hearing your story, who resonates with the same situation, how do they take that first step? That's a really good question. I would think about, it's still, kimchi is superfood. It's awesome, but it doesn't have to be kimchi. So eat something, see, it's something that you really like. It's all about finding what you like to eat. If you like tangy flavor, if you like, you know, sauerkraut, if you, so, so think about your, history like what your ancestors used to eat if you're from like german area that who sauerkraut right that's what you love to eat awesome eat that and of course adding variety is very nice so you reach out to like all right kimchi i'll try that and mix and match and see what you like kombucha can be a really good one because a lot of people like drinking and that's a really good one rather than drinking something you know like diet coke it's <laughs> there's nothing diet about it as we know but if you like this yeah. stuff, just switch it a little bit. Like maybe try it with like, I'll have like one cup of gongsa today and see how it feels. Like switch it with what you like. So take baby steps rather than doing, making a drastic changes. Take baby steps and see how you feel. Like when you have the sensation of, oh man, I have a little more energy. Oh man, I actually feel good after I eat. I, I am actually feeling great. I feel rested. I feel energized. And that's really a sign. When you eat something, if you're tired, that's a big warning sign that what you're eating is probably not good. And also the way you eat it. I'm not talking about raw or cooked, cooked meat. I'm talking about because your body is always listening to you. If you're look, looking at the phone, you look at the news alert while you're eating. Like you can eat the best food ever. You can drink kombucha and it doesn't matter. Your system will go like, ooh, warning sign. And you'll go in fight flight mode. So that's very, very bad. That's one thing I continue to learn from my health and wellness students by talking to them. Diet is very important, but diet alone doesn't fix your problems because you need this system. You need the system to calm your immune system down while you're eating something healthy. So it's like this. You have, let's say you're eating kimchi with like, I don't know, like your favorite pork belly or something. You're having an argument with your loved one, right? Then what happens? You just, your gut turns upside down and you like, you feel like throwing up. See the gut brain connection right there. So that's like that. It's, it's very subtle if you're not paying attention to your body. 
if you're eating in a hurry, if you're just like, I, I go out to eat and I see people just gluing on the phone and eating like this, right? That is, no matter what you eat, your, your immune system in the background is fight or flight mode. That's, gonna, that's not going to help your digestion. You are teaching your body in a way, gastroenteritis. That's how you get ulcer. I love that you're calling this out because I think it goes both ways. Um, you know, sometimes, and again, it comes back to this whole prescriptive mentality. Well, if I just do this, then this will happen. And this is usually like, take this pill, take this supplement, eat this food, eat this specific way. Then all my problems will be solved without acknowledging that, like you're saying, we're an entire ecosystem. We're an entire universe. And that universe is picking up messaging from a variety of, of places. It isn't just the inputs of the food or the nutrients that are there. It's also the, um, the environment you're creating. And when we eat with intentionality, I think even if we had a fast food meal, but with intentionality or with love or in a calmer state, you may not have the same negative impact uh, from that food as you would if you're in, even like you said, eating good, healthy food, but in this state of heightened sensitivity or not paying attention. And, you know, we've been fed this mythology of multitasking. We're not really multitaskers. We're not really capable of that. And so while it might feel like, oh, I'm just, you know, consuming in two ways, but unfortunately what's happening is your body is getting mixed messages and it's not able to receive the nutrients in the same way. And so really taking your time, and this is why, um, you know, I'm not a religious person in the sense that I don't go out and practice a religion. I, I practice religion in the sense that I reconnect to self and spirit. And I just feel like saying grace or even taking just a little time to honor. <sighs> I've landed. I'm in this space. I'm about to nourish myself. I'm about to take in these nutrients, even just setting an intention for taking that time to do something for yourself, for your body. This is self-care. It isn't like, oh, just, you know, put the fuel hose in and guzzle it down. It, it's a way for you to even create some peace and some calm in your life, no matter what's going on. And so I love that you're bringing this up because it's just that reminder. It isn't, I mean, there isn't just one thing that's going to help you heal. It's many things. We are so multifaceted and, you know, there's, we have so much more power when we place our intention that's on awesome. something. So whether that's the intention of making the food, whether that's the intention of how we set our place and, you know, what are the utensils we use, if it's intention in the type of dishes we have, just putting our intention is so incredibly powerful. And I think we forget that, especially because we're often putting our intention on our fears and our worries and our negative, you know, those negative things. And then unfortunately those things can sometimes come to pass as a result. But when we focus on self-care, nourishment, sanctity, right? Just creating yeah. a, a, a moment, a place of peace. And, and, and especially with a fermented food, cause you're engaging with a living being. You're about to there consume a what, living being yeah. into your body. That's going to live inside of you. Right. Exactly. Like, um, and even if it doesn't, it's DNA is going to be in there and it's going to, you know, help work with the organisms that are in there. And so I feel like, you know, instead of being germaphobes and afraid of bacteria, like when we fully acknowledge that relationship, be it with, you know, the, the plants, I know I'm sort of going on here, but you hear what I'm saying. Like, no, it's beautiful. I, I, really you. Magical I, love that. That. <laughs> I, I love that you're going on. That's awesome. No, it's, it's exactly well, and the other thing that I think was so important was you talked about, I started my research in 2014. I changed my diet in 2015. I think so often we feel we have to like read one book and quickly jump in. And that isn't always the best way for success because as we know, creating new habits is challenging. And probably even as you started eliminating those foods from your diet, there may have been other, right? We have an emotional connection to certain foods. Oh, for sure. There's a lot of other things that are going on besides just I swap out one input for another input and voila, I'm done. So I know that you teach a course mm -hmm. and I would love to hear more about how people can, you know, what do they learn in your course and how, how do you help people take back control of their um, gut health with, with what you teach? 
That's thanks for asking. It'll be super fun. I actually have a really fun event coming next Saturday. I have a live God Healing Master Class. It's gonna be winter theme. Um, it's gonna it's once a year, so you don't want to miss it. I'm gonna go in depth about this. So I'll teach exactly what to eat and also how to make it sustainable. Because like you said, changing habits are it can be challenging, but it's it's not it shouldn't be it shouldn't be very difficult it should be it should it's like you say it's a self-loving thing there are many fun things you can do like one thing you can incorporate right now is like building a ritual of eating right when i have meal i light a candle i'm like having a little i'm not a religious person at all but i just have a little prayer and of like in this healing food it's and like this delicious food and I'm talking to the food and you eat it with you being there, like your, your wine tasting, right? You have this good food, you're like eating like, mm, that's so good. So you're having, a, I'm not being orgy in my mouth. Like you just have fun with it, right? You, you're just being there by paying attention to your senses. You, you're really going back to your senses. So I'm gonna teach this. We're gonna go in depth at the uh, uh, live, Healing Masterclass next Saturday. So if you get on, if you visit hungrygopher.com, um, there's, you can download the top three Korean anti inflammatory recipes and you can make a very simple dish from there if you want to jumpstart right away. And they'll, that way you get you, and it'll get you weekly newsletter from me so I can keep it posted about the upcoming event, such as next Saturday live event which will be super fun. It's a once a year event. I'm, I'm super pumped. It'll be, it'll be super fun. So yeah, that's how you can follow me. And YouTube is a great one. I do weekly live on YouTube and every Thursday, Thirsty Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> so if, you're, yeah. if you're thirsty, come on over. <laughs> <laughs> Grab a kimchi cocktail and come on over. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Kombucha or whatever you want to bring. Little whiskey yeah, good. Totally. Like, tea's good. Water is good. Yeah, all of it's good. But I, I really have loved our conversation today, son. And I, I'm excited that you have experienced so much healing in your life as a result of simply shifting what you eat, how you eat, and of course, including more fermented foods and drinks into your diet so that you can have that healthy microbiome. And um, yes, please, at Hungry Gopher, follow on Instagram, find on YouTube, lots of free, wonderful content. And if you're anyone who's struggling with trying to find some solutions, you know, I always consider kombucha a gateway. And I think for Sun, that gateway is kimchi. But whatever your gateway is, it's that way into fermented foods and drinks. It's that way into recognizing, acknowledging the gut microbiome connection. And in fact, I call us bacterio sapiens because I feel like that word more aptly describes our relationship with the bacterial world, which is That's fun. That's symbiotic, fun. right? To say yeah. the least, you know, we have to be connecting with the, you know, and there's more good guys than bad guys, as evidenced by the fact that we're all still living, breathing, walking. And there talking. you go. There you go. Um, you know, and I think that, of course, immunity is top of mind still. And so anything we can do, any steps we can take that's going to create a stronger terrain in our gut that's going to just nourish us from the inside out it, we just have a better chance than when we go out into the world and we don't know what we're running into when we're con connecting with other people and in fact connecting with people is so important and so vital and these last couple of years of isolation have been really they've been soul hurting right like right. it hurts yeah. our souls to not be in contact and i think we took for granted how much we need and appreciate and absorb all of that energy, which goes to what I was talking to earlier, which is I saw family and it just was such a nourishing experience, just yeah. Yeah. being with people you love and being able to share that. But to do it safely, we have to know that our immune systems are strong and healthy. And, you know, Hungry Gopher has lots of wisdom to share from her journey. So I hope you will follow her, find her, enjoy her masterclass. And thank you so much for being here today, son. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Emma. It was so much fun. So good to see you. Bye-bye. Thanks for having me. Bye. Of course. So what I love about Sun's message is just how we can all heal. We can all start where we are. Wherever you are, there is something you can do to come back into balance. And so whether that's 
just taking a breath and being present with where you are and who you are in this moment, because this moment is all we have. I, look, I've been tortured by my past. I worry about the future. There's no doubt about it. But every time I remember to come back to the present moment, I'm able to acknowledge even in crisis, even in situations that feel dire and intense, I am complete and whole in this universe. And, um, you know, fermented foods and drinks are, are a great way to help boost our energy and our mood and, but they're not a cure. Like nothing is a cure, but let food be thy medicine. And so when we let food be our medicine and we go to the plants and we go to the herbs and we have different seasonings that we use, um, all of these like oregano and thyme, they're antiviral, they're antifungal. They actually have a really important impact on the body. But again, we're not supposed to consume massive quantities of them. Um, or like in some cultures, we can make tea, tisans out of them, steep them in, in water. Uh, we can then add them to our kombucha or other ferments that not only put flavor and pop in there, but have all these great benefits. And, you know, Mother Nature has this entire panoply of this lovely medicine chest of herbs and plants and roots and, and stems and all kinds of things for us to um, tap into and to really uh find what nourishes us. And so I hope that these messages, these stories, they inspire you to get more creative with your fermentation process, get more creative with the types of foods and things we're incorporating into our diet. Because honestly, that Western diet, that refined flour, sugar, and look, I eat those foods too sometimes, but you know, it's always it's about quantity and proportion and making sure that we're, we're doing things in a way that fully supports our biome. So thanks so much for watching this Mama Monday. Can't wait to see you next time. Again, like, share, subscribe, follow, whatever your heart feels called to do. We are so grateful for that. And again, thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time.